Hi, I'm Arlen Walker, and I'm live from Pelham's Wasteland, and today I am back with more of Merrick the Mighty in Era, the epic storytelling game. Merrick, the scourge of the known world, a man of barbaric proportions, but cunning intelligence, and an esoteric knowledge that would make most sorcerers weep. Ah, Merrick is a reaver, a slayer, a man of great ambition, out to gain fortune and power and have a great time doing it. So yeah, that is Merrick the Mighty. If you remember last time when we played Era, we went through the first half or the first chunk of an adventure through the snow and swamps. Merrick started in the north, in the northern city-states, was propped up against the wall of a northern longhouse listening to a scaldic tale, realized that said scaldic tale possessed some element of truth, that he had not been as aware of before and decided that he must seek out the treasures of an ancient king that were told of in this tale. He gathered up some men from, the, from those that were uh, present in the longhouse, had to cut down one rebel and... Uh, do that to secure the, the loyalty of the remaining men. But then they went out into the world. And first they were oppressed by mists and fog. Merrick led them successfully through the mists, but realized that there is an ancient and evil intelligence behind such weather and... That does not dismay him. As he pressed onward, they moved forward to the snowy mountains, passed over the mountains, Merrick securing the loyalty of his men through his capable leadership, but at the same time realizing that he would not be able to use or rely on his knowledge nearly as effectively in the presence, in the, the pass over the mountains or on the other side of these mountains, precisely because he was in uncharted territory and that therefore his knowledge of the area was relatively lacking. They reached the swamp on the other side of the mountains and were attacked by frogmen. Merrick and his men drove them off, Merrick wounding the frogmen, and his men followed the frogmen to a tower in the swamp. But they must pass through the moor itself before that. So they passed through the moor, watching their step as it was terribly treacherous to get through, Merrick once again leading his men successfully to um, get through the moor, get to the tower of the frogmen. And then finally, once they reached this tower that you can see pictured here in the midst of the swamp, this is a sort of artist representation that I found that I liked a whole lot, um, they reached the tower, sought to catch their breaths, but another horde of frogmen poured out of the tower. Merrick and his men cut them down, but Merrick was wounded in the fight. However, his wound would not stop him from following the frogmen deeper into the tower as they left a trail of blood and viscera upon the floor as they hauled their wounded and their dead away from the battle. And that is where we begin today. So, 
the first challenge, what is it going to be? So last time, one of the things that we used a, um, a statement on was to say that there wouldn't be any, um, any more morale issues for Merrick's party, but that was last session. So I think it would be appropriate before Merrick leads his men down into the tower and whatever lies beneath that there be a essentially a morale check. So um, elements, the first is going to be presence. And let me double check how I was. Uh, yeah, presence GM. And what is the second? What is Merrick going to decide to use? I think, hmm, mm -hmm. he's going to say swiftness. Because he really wants to um, get the, to face off against the frogmen again, to chase them down, run them down, and uh, destroy their horde that poured out of the tower. So the opponent is going to be... Northern Warband. The difficulties. So this is only a minion challenge. Well, let me double check. Yeah, opponent. Difficulty. M. And let's check the Warband. North Born. Northborn Warband. They have a Presence D6, a Presence D8, um, Swiftness D6 for Javelins, but that's not really. So we'll say it's just a D8 and a D6 and a uh, 0. So D8 is 2, D6 is 1, so it'll be 2, 1, 1. Matched dice for Merrick. He has a uh, Presence D6 for his Unsettling Gaze and Aura, Presence D8 for his Bearskin Cloak, and a Presence D6 for his Scarred Countenance. So I don't think we can use our Swiftness D8 moves like a shadow right now. Um, so that is a, a D8, a D6, and a D6. Um, let me double check how I writing that. Just, yeah. D8, comma, D6, comma, D6. So the only one we really need to roll is the D8, because that's the only one that hypothetically we could lose on if we roll a 1. But uh, we'll roll all of them. So D8... D6, D6, result, 4, PC, 5, PC, 3, PC. So, what happens? So, first off, Mary hears some grumbling from the men they did not expect frogmen, the, the sort of antediluvian terrors of these ancient races are something that they did not really expect and that they um, are, you know, concerned about. So Merrick, first off, Merrick rallies the troops and um, gathers them together so that they are willing to charge off into the depths. The second is that Merrick, in fact, silences the grumbling so effectively and demonstrates his prowess. He's demonstrated his prowess in battle so effectively too that um, they are not going to grumble anymore in this session, this this uh, uh, set of scenes, this cycle. Um, Merrick calms the men and convinces them to go deeper into the tower and to 
stay loyal no matter what. And then finally, Merrick's third statement is going to be that Merrick has done so quickly enough. He has gathered his men together quickly enough that they're going to be able to overtake the frogmen and the, that are retreating and um, smash into them. Merrick and his men will catch the retreating frogmen. Excellent. So the next scene, we have a GM choice and a PC choice. The GM is going to choose Esoterica. GM. And the PC is going to choose Fury. So the opponent is the Frogman. Difficulties. This is going to be another minion challenge. There's only like a couple, a handful of frogmen that are still um, defending sort of the rear guard. And let me do, 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 close the Northborn Warband and pull out a uh, frogman. All right. So the frogmen have an Esoterica D6, they have a Fury D8 and an Esoterica D6, and they have another Esoterica D4. So it'll be D6, D6, D4, because that Fury D8 is canceled out by the Fury wound of a D8. So D6, D6, D4 for a minion, D6, D6, D4, that's just 1, 1, 1. So Merrick's definitely going to be able to overrun them. Um, Merrick has his Fury D12 minus 3. His D64. His D10. And his D6. So D12. Uh, D12 plus D6 minus 3. Okay. Matched dice d12 plus d6 minus 3 d10 d6. All right, the result these so d12 plus d6 minus 3 is a 5. Ten is a five, and the D six, not D sixteen, a D six is a three. So Merrick and his men, the first thing they do is they overrun the rear guard. Merrick and his men overrun the frogman rear guard. Merrick and his men also take um, some prisoners. Some of the frogmen are wounded. They butcher most of the frogmen force, but a couple of them were wounded, and so they take those prisoner. They take a few... Prisoners from the frogmen and butcher the rest. And finally, Merrick. Um, we're going to say that he, um, in the pause, he allows his men to kind of, you know, um, tie up the, the frogmen that they captured, and he's going to get ready to interrogate them, but he's going to spend a minute patching up his wound, bandaging himself, and he's not going to be suffering from that fury wound anymore. Actually, no, he's going to, he's going to, yeah. Merrick spends a moment patch. 
bandaging himself to remove the fury wound. All right, and then let's edit. Fury, limit, Master Warrior, and Limitless Rage no longer wounded. So he's going to be at full effectiveness. But I'm also, I'm going to take away the Frogman's wound on Fury now because the Frogmen are not, um, he's defeated the sort of whole force of Frogmen that were in the area. So when they encounter more Frogmen, those are not going to be suffering from the wound. That's sort of a, a thing that the GM can do to narratively adjust things like that. Um, and the PC can suggest that too in a story game like this. All right. Elements for the next scene. Presence from the GM. And we already used Esoterica, so let's use Knowledge PC. Opponent, Frogman. Standard difficulty. That means, oh no, it's an elite difficulty, isn't it? An elite difficulty against the Frogman. So the Frogman have Presence D8. They have no knowledge trappings or presence trappings. Another presence D8 and knowledge D6. So D8, D8, D6. That is in an elite, a 6, 6, 5 challenge. Ooh, nasty. Match dice. Merrick, he has his knowledge D10 minus 3 that he's going to use. Um, and he has his presence D8 bearskin cloak, so D10 minus 3, D8, and then a D6 and a D6. D10 plus D6 minus 3. D8, D6. All right, this one's a little trickier. So, 10 plus D6 minus 3. It's a 7, a success for Merrick on the first piece of the challenge. D8 needs to roll at least a 6. Rolls a 1. And he needs to roll at least a 5 on this D6. Rolls a 3. All right, so what happens? So the GM says that um, hmm. <laughs> the Frogman prisoners are going to be uncooperative. They're not going to give Merrick any information, um, and therefore they're not going to help lead Merrick deeper into this uh, ruin. The frog, Frogman are frogmen prisoners are uncooperative and will not lead Merrick deeper into the ruin. Furthermore, the Frogmen's resistance challenges Merrick's charismatic presence and wounds him. Merrick, Merrick has his men slaughter 
the frogmen prisoners in a fit of rage. So, the frogmen choose not to be helpful and lead the party deeper into the ruin, and in fact, they seem to uh, make Merrick a little gloomier, a little more crestfallen uh, in his failure. Um, and so Merrick has his men slaughter the, uh, what was the highest, a D8? to the nearest highest dice to the roll. So the highest die rolled was a five, so that is a three. Oh no, we used the six because that was the the, their challenge rating, but that's okay. Um, anyway, Merrick uh, seems crestfallen a little bit. He expected these frogmen to totally capitulate in moments after he um, cut down their men and um, took them prisoner, but in a fit of rage, he has his men slaughter the remaining prisoners and decides to press on deeper into the ruin. So we've used presence and knowledge. Um, Merrick gets to choose now. He is going to go ahead and use swiftness. All right, Merrick chooses Swiftness. The GM chooses Esoterica. The opponent the ruins. Difficulties. It is going to be a standard difficulty. Get through another section of the ruins, and in fact, we can change the picture. We can delete this. And... Do, 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 do. <laughs> Their ground dungeon, I think that is the one. Yes, that's what's going on. The ruins of this city because one of the things that they realized last time was that this tower was sort of the the tallest tower in an entire city and that this city has sunk into the swamp but it remains traversable and so merrick is traversing the corridors of this now underground city do, 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 do the ruins did i build the ruins? No. So let's see. What should the challenge be? It's a standard challenge. Um, let's say a D8 and 2D6. That seems good. 4, 3, 3. Matched dice for swiftness and esoterica. So his esoterica is a D8. We're going to use that. Esoterica D4, the unread book of the Necromancer. I don't think we can really use the book of the Necromancer, Vicamel, to help us here. Um, we have Swiftness D8, though, moves like a shadow. So Merrick could scout ahead and try to avoid ambushes and anything like that as he moves silently along at the front of this party. And then, um, do we have anything else? We don't have another Esoterica, so we just have 2d8. That kind of sucks. Um, all right, match dice. 0, d8, d8. We can match the dice with whatever we want, so we can choose to just say we don't have anything for the 4 and take the 3s. Um, that's uh, totally fair. So, result, 0, gm. 
and then we need to roll two d8s, d8, a five, and a seven. Five PC, seven PC. All right, Merrick gets to make the first statement. So his first statement is that they are not ambushed as they traverse the underground city, at least for now. They're moving through the underground, and no frogmen spring out of anywhere to get them. The GM's statement is going to be that, um, hmm, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Because it would have been obvious to ambush them with the GM's statement for the next one. Um, but the GM can't do that now. Um, he will say it's going to take... Um, his twist on that, though, is that they're not ambushed, but they have to move much more slowly to get through the, um, the ruins because they are, um, moving stealthily to try to avoid ambushers. Um, so Merrick and his men avoid any frogmen ambushers as they progress but must move slowly to move stealthily and then what the PC's statement is is that um, despite the slow speed they come to a place where the uh, ruined city starts to rise underneath their feet, and it seems like they're getting close to getting out of the underground section um, and getting towards a, um, you know, an above-ground remainder of the city. Merrick and his men feel the ground rising beneath them as they get... Closer to an above ground ruin. All right. Do, do, do. Next scene GM gets to this side. And so, what have we used? We've used a swiftness scene, a presence scene, and an esoterica scene. So we have knowledge, which we can use again, and fury. So we are going to, um, hmm, <laughs> or we could say we've done an esoterica, a knowledge, and a swiftness scene, so that presence can be used again. Hmm. We could do presence fury. Yeah. So the opponent, once again, a frogman, and again, it is elite. I think. No, it's another standard. One more standard, and then we've got elites. Oh, so this will have to be, hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, so we can do a fury scene here and then a presence and then a knowledge scene next. And that'll still be legal. Um, standard, what is, so it is um, D8, 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 D6. So four, 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 three. So what is that? A seven, four, four. Matched dice. D twelve. I have D twelve, D eight, D six, D ten, D six, D twelve. D8, D6, D10, D6, 
So we'll do D12. All right, I'm just working out how we're gonna divide them up. All right, D12 plus D8 versus the seven, D10 versus the four, and two D6 versus the four. So, a five from the D12 plus the D8. A nine from the D10. And then a 2D6, 2D6. An eight, another success for Merrick. But we're, we're not getting the consistent successes quite as much. So Merrick comes upon another force of frogmen that have been sent out from whatever central lair they have. Um, drives forward amongst them, attempting to drive them back, cuts down a whole bunch of them. Um, the GM says that um, we already wounded Merrick once, so it seems like maybe... So Merrick and his men cut down a horde of... Cut down, cut in, charge into the horde of frogmen... Merrick and his men charge into a horde of frogmen, cutting them down left and right, but doing so tears open Merrick's bandages. And he bleeds again. The frogmen realizing they are beaten retreat with Merrick and his men at their heels. All right, so we got, we're sort of in the same situation we were before, but now Merrick and his men are much deeper into the frogmen's territory, so they're much, they're much more likely to come across whatever sort of the, the central sanctum of the frogmen is. So the PC, the GM chooses knowledge, swiftness and Merrick takes a minus three wound to his fury starting to, to amass a number of wounds all right his opponent is The ruins. Try to navigate them quickly enough. Um, this time it is an elite challenge to navigate them as quickly as he can. So let's do, we already did swiftness and esoterica. Swiftness and knowledge is probably similar. D8, D66, 655, that seems fair. Maybe even... We could bump up one of these. We could say that it's a, uh, no, let's leave it like that. Um, just because I haven't built it yet. And then matched dice. Merrick is knowledge d10. d10 minus three is probably still better than a d4. So match dice d10 minus three. 
knowledge d6 swiftness d8 we're still trying to i think we're trying to move like a shadow now we're so close to the uh so close to the uh the place and we've got um our sort of shamanic knowledge to help us out so d8 d6 all right that's gonna have to do it a three will not do it from the big die let's see about our d8 two oh no And a four from the D6 means that these are all GM victories. So what is the GM going to say? So um, Merrick and his men, the GM is going to be nice and say that Merrick and his men follow the frogman's trail and arrive at the inner sanctum of their... Uh, their uh, leadership but the frogmen are ready for them and a whole horde of frogmen is waiting to challenge Merrick and his men Merrick and his men arrive at the inner sanctum of the Frogman City only to find themselves facing a horde of frogmen. And finally, what's the last thing? The last one is that the frogmen are led by a shaman, some type of uh, caster who seems to be drawing on elemental powers. The frogmen horde is led by a shamanic leader who is drawing on evil esoteric powers. The men realize it is kill or be sacrificed to the frog men dark gods. All right, final scene. PC gets to pick. We're going Fury as usual. Try to tear through these frogmen. And the GM Esoterica for the frogman shaman. The opponent frogmen difficulties. We're going to bump up the difficulty from elite to legendary because the GM won. I'm going to say that's what the. Uh, the GM got to do with uh, their three statements is that they could bump up the difficulty of the last one. So, legendary difficulty. The Frogman for Esoterica and Fury. So, D6, D8, D6, D64, D68, D6, D64. So, D8. 3d6, d4. d8 plus d4. 2d6, d6. Which comes out to, at legendary, um, a 12, a 12, and a 6. Oh no. This is what the frogmen are good at. However, this is also what Merrick is good at. So he has 
a D12, a D6, a D4, a D10, and a D6. D12 plus D6 minus 3. D10 D10 plus D6 and finally D6 yeah N plus D6 all right let's do let's just put zero in there D10 plus d6 and put 2d6 there so we we're guaranteed to lose one of the challenges but we got better odds of beating the other two so result is slash r d12 plus 2d6 minus 3 is a 12 nice okay 12 PC 0 GM and then D10 plus D6 the 5 oh but we we could use we didn't declare it first but we could use our extra D8 from the Northborn Warband let's do that so let's reroll plus D8. That's a 14, 14 PC warband survives. Summary Merrick cuts down the frogman shaman in single combat. His men fall upon the foot. Soldiers like wolves and scatter them. However, when the dust clears and the frogmen flee, it is clear that there is no treasure of ancient and kings in this sanctum Ta da so Merrick and his men fall upon them Merrick cuts down the shaman his men cut down the infantry but no oh, treasure. Where is the treasure of the ancient kings? Is it even in here? We will have to find out next time. Oh boy. Another cycle. So we will call this cycle. Um, Subterranean Warfare. So Merrick and his men have reached the inner sanctum. They have cut down a whole horde of frogmen. Perhaps not all of the frogmen that are there, though. And they have not found any treasure. What are they going to do? I don't know. We're going to have to find out next time. So thank you so much for watching. 
that was a whole lot of fun. Merrick is a super fun character to play. Um, he, you know, cuts through all sorts of hordes of enemies. And this game, I think, really does work really well for solo play. And it's totally free, I'll remind you. Um, it's You can get it for pay what you want on DriveThruRPG from Omnihedron Games. Era, the epic storytelling game. It's a great game. Totally worth getting a copy yourself. Um, so, yeah. That is that is just, you know, if you play solo, this is a game that I would totally recommend because you can have a whole lot of fun with um with this game. So, um yeah, I think that is that. If you want to get in contact with me, I am at Cows from Powis on Twitter. I am on Anchor, anchor.fm slash Pelham's Wasteland. And obviously I'm here on YouTube, live from Pelham's Wasteland. And it would be great if you liked, if you subscribed, if you left a comment. All of those things help the channel and are really great for me. I do this because of the community. I'm, you know, I'm not making any money from this or anything. So it's really great to have um, community interaction from you guys um it's it's just awesome to to get to talk to you guys read your comments um all of that sort of stuff so um it would be great if you did all that all right i've been arlen walker i've been live from pelham's wasteland and i will see you next time take care everybody